Hello, welcome back. Today I have for you my e.l.f. hyped up products review video. So actually these aren't all really, really hyped up, but I have heard these talked about on at least one or two channels um, and a couple of them are really hyped up. So we're gonna be testing them. I've been using these now for over a month, I think. Yeah, I do have some thoughts on all of them, so yeah, we're gonna get into that, but I hope that you're doing well. Please do, if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. I would love to have you join the fam, as people on YouTube say. <laughs> but yeah, I would love to have you here and uh, chat with you in the comments as well. So let me know what you think of this video down below and let's get into it. Okay, so the first e.l.f. product I'm going to apply is the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. This has a satin finish, it says on the tube, and I am in the shirt Fair Beige, which is a pretty good match. They are pretty good at describing the undertones of their shades on their website, so I do recommend, I found this to be a pretty accurate match. This said it was uh, for fair, fairest skin tones with a neutral undertone, which is what I always tend to go for, as I do have a neutral undertone. Um, so yeah, sometimes, I find shade descriptions are not accurate, but I do find this particular one to be a good accurate description. I have already applied all my skincare and my sunscreen. I used the Supergoop Play SPF 50 on my face, and then I used some of this Revolution Super Dewy Skin Tint. Um, I This is fairly new to me, but I have used it a couple of times already with this, so I kind of know how they play together. There are some issues that I have with this concealer though, so I'm gonna go get into those. Um, but first I'm just gonna show you how I like to apply it. It does have a really big fat doe foot applicator, which I do like, um, but if you do prefer to be quite precise with your concealer application, then something like this is not necessarily gonna be for you. So I'm just gonna apply it how I would normally apply it, which is probably not the most scientifically accurate way to do concealer, but I just find that that's what works for me. I obviously need quite a bit of coverage under my eyes and then just little bits of coverage here and there over the rest of my face. Okay, so I have now blended all of the concealer in. I always use a brush. I tend to use this little Real Techniques contour brush. This is really, really old. I don't know if you can still get it, but I like this kind of little round brush to blend in this concealer with. Um, I haven't used it with a sponge, so I can't say as to how that would make the application look. Uh, typically, sponges do tend to soak up a bit more of the product, so if you want a little bit of a sheerer look, that might work really well. Okay, I have some thoughts about this concealer. I do think that it looks nice. Definitely, from a distance, like, the, the normal distance that I would be speaking to a person face to face, I mean, obviously in these times it's a little bit further than normal, but, like, just, you know, average kind of distance to speak to someone, this concealer is gonna look great. You're gonna look really airbrushed. It's gonna have good coverage and I like how it looks. However, I do find that throughout the day with this particular concealer, maybe because it is a bit more full coverage, but also possibly because of my skin type, I do have normal to dry skin. I just think it looks a little bit cakey throughout the day. So at the moment, because it's freshly blended, I think it plays really well, particularly with this tinted moisturizer underneath. So when you put products underneath, um, like moisturizing products underneath, I find that it does work pretty well, but throughout the day, I do find it kind of rubs off through around my nose. It looks a little bit kind of cakey and patchy, like you can sort of see it sitting on my chin area. And then under my eyes, I kind of, do find that it tends to um, cling to fine lines. Now, every concealer will cake around your fine lines a little bit, but this is like noticeable lines that aren't necessarily there with other concealers I've used. So I will say that throughout the day, that is that tends to be what happens. Now, I don't usually set it because I don't set my face on a day-to-day -day basis. I only tend to set my face if I A, remember to do it, or B, have an event to go to, which obviously at the moment I don't. So it might 
be different if you set it, I don't know, but I don't like too much powder, I don't like my face to look too matte and um, layering products on doesn't always look the best on me. With other concealers, I don't set it and they look perfectly fine. They kind of wear naturally through the day. I don't find this wears naturally. However, that being said, I do, as I say, really like how it looks just person to person, looking in the mirror now, it looks great. It's just after those few hours, when I look really close up at my skin in the mirror, I can see that it's not looking it's not looking as good as some of my other concealers look. So I'm specifically really thinking about when I'm comparing this, the Uoma um, Stay Woke Concealer because I find that that has a similar coverage level to this, but I do find that it looks and wears a little bit more naturally than this through the day. So yeah, this is a really hyped up concealer. I don't think it's as good as some of the other concealers I've tried. I do prefer my Oma Beauty, my Milani Conceal and Perfect, even though I think that might be breaking me out. I do prefer uh, the formula of that just because it's a little bit thinner. It's a little bit more lightweight. Um, it doesn't feel as much like I'm wearing makeup when I put it on, whereas this one you can kind of feel it on your skin. This is more accessible than both those brands. This is sold in a lot of stores, both online and in drugstores, um, and it's really, really affordable. So if those kinds of things are important to you and you want to shop cruelty free, um, but need something that's a low price and easy to get hold of, I think this is a good option. I'm just gonna put some bronzer on now and then I'm going to talk about blush. Okay, so my next product to talk about are the e.l.f. putty blushes. Now I have two shades. One is, I believe this is Tahiti, and then this one is Turks and Caicos. It's like um, a peachy and a more pinky shade. Now, the annoying thing about this is they don't have the shade names written on the pot itself. So once you take the packaging off and throw the cardboard away, unless you remember what shade you bought, you're gonna be a bit stuck. I do really like both these shades. I have used them a couple of times on camera already and I mentioned them in my recent favorites video. So, spoiler alert, I do really like these. I'm gonna use Turks and Caicos today um, just because I think it would go more with my look, but I really enjoy both shades and I get a lot of wear out of both of them. So I've seen mixed reviews of these and I do understand why. They are a bit of an interesting formula. They're not so much like a lot of cream blushes that I've tried. When you start to blend them out with your finger, they sort of turn a little bit rubbery, a bit putty-like, as the name would suggest. Because of that they can be a little bit hard to work with and hard to blend out with your fingers and that's typically how I would normally blend out a cream blush is how I find it looks the most natural and skin like but with these I definitely think they work better when you apply them with a brush and the way that I like to do that is get a round stippling brush like this one from Real Techniques and then I just dip it straight in the pot and I put it straight on my cheek and with that, I find you get a much more diffused, blended, natural look than if you were to try and blend it out with your fingers because it sort of just sticks to the area that you first put it when you put your, when you put your finger on it. Um, and then it becomes quite hard to blend out. But with this stipple brush, it applies much more evenly and naturally because it's sort of being distributed over the whole area of the brush rather than just like your little finger tip, you know? These aren't, don't really get dewy throughout the day or anything like that um, compared to other cream blushes I've tried. So they are kind of like a cream, I wouldn't say they're a cream to powder formula, but they definitely have a matte finish. Um, but because they are cream, they still look natural and like uh, you're not really wearing blush. Whereas if you were to wear powder blush, a lot of the time you can see it sitting on the skin. They don't have a ton of pigment, so you're gonna wanna build it up. You can see that I'm going back into the pot and back and onto my cheeks a few times just to build up the intensity. I like that because I don't wanna look like a clown accidentally the first time I put my blush on my cheeks. Um, so I prefer to build up slowly, but yeah, I mean, just something to bear in mind that if you find it annoying not being able to get tons of pigment out of a blush, then 
this might not be for you. Again, for the price, I think these are really, really good quality. Um, I know that NARS has come out with a similar cream, kind of matte cream blush recently in a pot like this. I haven't used those. NARS aren't cruelty free, so I won't be buying them, but uh, I do think if you are we were interested in those and just want to try out a cheaper alternative before you spend the money these are a really great option okay so i've just primed my eyes i do find that i need to do this with the next product i'm going to talk about so these are the elf bite size shadow quads so i have two shades i bought cream and sugar and rose water so kind of a pinky rose toned and then more of a like neutral kind of everyday champagnes bronze kind of colorway so i do really enjoy both of these shades i think that this one uh is great i am going to use the rose water one today on my eyes but i just wanted to give a little shout out to this because i do really really like the color combination i think if you are looking to just not be overwhelmed with eyeshadow palettes and neutral palettes i think there's a lot of options out there and it can be very overwhelming and picking something like this up is going to just make your decision making process when choosing what shadows to put on your eyes a lot easier and a lot quicker and these shadows all complement the tones complement each other really well um, i typically like to mix these two and just tap them all over my lid with my finger and then I put a little bit of this matte one in the crease um, and if I want to smoke it out I will use this one but I find this these darker shades actually quite hard to work with and blend out uh, seamlessly and naturally I find that with a lot of really dark eyeshadows like dark browns and yeah dark browns um does anyone else find that I, I always think they end up making my eyes look muddy and i don't like the way they look so i typically tend to stick to these three they are pretty pigmented so compared to something like the charlotte tilbury quads which i really enjoy i've only tried one and i will say it's a palette of pops rather than her traditional eyeshadow quads there's a mix of like glitters shimmers um, but no matte shades and these I find to be more sheer so you can really build them up um, or you can have a very subtle wash of colour whereas these are more pigmented um, so you're going to get more of a punchy look on your eyeshadows and less of like a sheer tint it just depends what look you're going for obviously these are a lot more affordable than these so uh, you know depending on what you're wanting and like how luxe you want to go and if you, what you want the packaging to feel like i mean there's really no comparison in the pack the feel of the packaging this is obviously a lot more luxe but i mean for the price these i think these are three pounds each i don't think you can go wrong with the formula i'm going to be using this rose water shade just because i've used this palette of pops so much on my channel and I, the reason that i bought this was to compare the two um i don't think they're dupes by any means they are actually quite different in terms of shades this one is a lot more rose gold you've got this kind of coppery tone up here whereas this is i would say more of a true pink rose i also don't think the formulas are dupes as i've just said but i do think they give similar similar looks on the eyes so if you don't want to spend the money on the charlotte tilbury but want to see if those kinds of pinky rosy shades look good on you then i think the three pound elf one is a good way to kind of test out those shades and just see if they suit your skin they suit you know your complexion i mean i have used this a couple of times before but not loads um the one thing i will say though is i find that these crease pretty badly so i have made sure i wear an eye primer today because i do find that if i don't it's kind of a creasy mess in a couple of hours so so you can see just by the undertone of this matte shade here for your crease it's very cool toned compared to the charlotte tilbury the charlotte tilbury is a lot more warm rose a mix of copper and pink whereas this is much more of like a pink mauve feel um, and then i'm gonna i really like how these shimmers apply with my fingers so i'm gonna take the darker one and just press that onto the lid 
And then I'm gonna take the lightest shade and pat that on top. This one has a lot of pigment to it. So you're just gonna wanna be careful and keep going back and blending. Okay, I'm gonna take a angled liner brush and I'm actually just gonna really subtly smoke out my top lash line with this deepest shade, um, just to kind of create a tiny bit of definition there. So this definitely does give more of a cool toned pink mauve undertone than the Charlotte Tilbury, as I've said, but I do still think it's a really nice option for springtime if you are wanting to try out those rosy shades on your skin tone. And I just think for three pounds, I mean, you really can't go wrong, can you? Okay, I'm going to do lashes and then come back and show you the brow gel that I have been using. So I just wanted to mention the e.l.f. Wow Brow Gel. I have been using this in the shade Taupe. I had run out of my brow gel, I needed a new one. I honestly just threw this in the cart when I was checking out because I was like, ugh, I need a new brow gel. The one I've been using for the past year is the Charlotte Tilbury Legendary Brows and I really love that because it has such a micro, tiny, tiny little wand that you can really get in very precisely with. This one I do think is fine and I mean it's really again like all these products very affordable um, compared to something like the Charlotte Tilbury. It does have little fibres in it, um, the shade is good for my brows but the thing that I don't like is that the wand is slightly bigger than the Charlotte Tilbury one so I do find it's easier to get messy with on my brows. Um, I like the Charlotte Tilbury ones because you can really go in and you don't need to worry about like making mistakes or having to clean up. And with this one, you just have to be a little bit more careful. With the fibers, they're gonna like beef out your brows a bit, but I already have quite prominent brows anyway, so I don't feel like I really need a lot of beefing up to them. I'd say this is an okay product. It hasn't blown my socks off but I will use it up. It, I don't get excited about brow products in general because I find brows really, really boring to do. And this is fine. <laughs> okay, the last product I'm gonna talk about today is the e.l.f. Sheer Slick Lipstick. Yeah, the e.l.f. Sheer Slick Lipstick in the shade Golden Pear. So this is a terracotta kind of orange shade, but it's sheer, so it comes off more as like just a, a terracotta orangey nude on me to be honest. So my thoughts about this are I generally prefer a lipstick feeling really luxe when I apply it. I like the ritual of it. I remember that I have those types of lipsticks in my collection more than I would something like this which is a really basically cheap packaging <laughs> which is absolutely fine and it's again a cheap product so I would expect that. Just for me personally I would rather pay more to get a really fancy uh, component for the lipstick and like really really nice luxe heavy packaging maybe with a magnetic closure uh, just because I prefer that kind of treat of like putting the lipstick on and then feeling like you've kind of done something nice for yourself whereas this I feel is more of just a throw on quickly need something on my lips and go I honestly am not wearing lip product pretty much at all at the moment just because of masks and I'm rarely going out of the house so I haven't worn this a ton because I tend to forget that I own it just because it's not like one of my sort of coveted lipstick purchases however I do think the formula is nice it's not as glossy as I would like it to be. So the sheer slick lipstick sounds like it's gonna be a really juicy, balmy, um, kind of glossy look on your lips. And it does look like that when you first apply it. And I do really like the shade on my skin tone as well. I think Golden Pear, it's just, it's sheer enough to still look nude, but it definitely has that more orangey undertone but I will say that the gloss fades very very quickly so it kind of ends up being more of a stain or a tint on your lips and for me I just want that really glossy look so I normally would put a gloss over the top of this I know they have come out with a, 
the same packaging, looks really similar to this, but it's called something different. It's like a lip, it's like a sheer lip balm or something. And it's got like a, it looks like this and it's got the lipstick, but then in the middle, it's got like a, a tube of like glossy balm. So maybe those are more glossy. I will leave the name of those in the description box so that you can check them out. But yeah, I mean, I think these are fine. These are good lipsticks but they don't excite me to wear. So let me know if you've tried any of these products in the comments, I would love to know. I am actually also planning on doing a cream blush roundup review video because I've been buying and trying quite a few cream blushes and I've got a few more that I want to try. But I'm thinking of doing that in kind of April, May time for spring, summer. So let me know if there are any cream blushes that you would like me to include in that. I would love to chat with you in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you are doing well and taking care of yourself and I will see you in the next one. Bye.